All right. Valo Katsat. Um, didn't he already set a set a price for this? So what do we care if he came there every Shabbat or on Shabbat itself? This is what he meant. If you did not establish the price of the um the, the contractual services that you how much it would cost, how much you're paying the messenger, how much you're paying the postman, you can't give it um you you can only give the letter for enough time can she get a beto that he's got to get to the house now again the house here um rashi's explanation is that the house that the letter is getting to ubeitil he says he he limits that heter umrim achi get a beta samukhla khoma so there's that the so um that's in lokatsat now which is odd so this is all about in lokatsat um and so this is a, a different act of Rav Shesh, so Kimta is, is slightly different. Umrim, so what is it, what do you, what is the mechir of the shlichut? What are you setting the price for? For the amount of time it takes you to get to the house of that person. Beit Hill says, you're, it's the amount of time it takes you to get to the, um, get to the, to the city. Ve'amart Reisha, Eim you don't, we said before, you have to do kitsuts. It said, "Aim shachin yiger biad goy biar shabbat elim ken kotzes lo damim." So, how do you explain that? Rav Sheshi, you just said it has to do with lo katzat. So, um, it sounds like so. Rav Sheshi would say, "In katzat, you can do it muter lechalutin." It doesn't matter. Once you kotzes the mechir, according to Rav Sheshi, you can deliver. It doesn't matter where he's going to get to. Hillel says, um, Rav Sheshi comes along and explains the limitations on that are that if you didn't establish uh, a price, then it, it would take um, as much, t- then you have to give him enough time either to get into the to the house, to the actual house itself, or get to the city. But there, that's in low katsats. So the katsats is that you can go anywhere. Low katsats, you're limited by Hillel and Shammai. So we asked the question, though, but the great says, it, it, it's, it sounds very, uh, you, it, the second case, of you shouldn't be able to send it all, according to the ratio. So Rav Shesh gives an answer, Lokasha, or he, he would theoretically answer, Lokasha, because you can explain how when he said that you can give it um, to a goy on Erev Shabbat, even if you did not establish a prize. When there is, it sounds like here, when you actually have a sniff door in the city. Kvad uh, mata, mata in the city. Um, Rashi gives this, he talks about door here. He calls door um, shilton ha'ir, uh, which, so, which is part of the authorities. And that's definitely true. And that is establishing a national post is, a, is a, one of the, the classic uh, signs that you have a central government. The shilton ha'ir velo regalin ishtoch and that's how uh, letters are sent. Door. So we said, I'm back in the Gemara. When you have a, a whole system set up in the city, that there's a city of, of uh, there's a postal service set up in the city. Ha, when you said you can give it, you can give the package, even you did not establish the price. Uh, that's in the case of the door Bermata, that is not established. Um, No, the look via beidar bemata is that it's a sort to to give it unless you unless you establish a price. That's what it is. It's a sort to give it unless you establish a price. That's how she, that's that's how it should be read. Had the look via beidar bemata. Tanoba em mafugim bisfina pachom mishloshayimim kodesh shabbat. So this is a, a very uh, interesting halacha. Uh, we we we're familiar with it a little. Um, the Rashi tells us what mafligin is. Now, this is how we talk about it today in modern Hebrew. The flig basfina. Rashi says mafrishin min hayabasha. What is mafligin? Mafrishin. You separate mafligin. It's on the plukta. The argue. You separate the chluk. So mafrishin min hayabasha layam. You separate from the land to see. V'zel l'shon haflagat sfina al shem she mafligin atzmo min hayishuv. That you separate yourself from 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 the cities. Tanravana, back in the Gemara, Ema figim bisvina pachom mishul shayimim kodam shabbat. Because it sounds like um, you want to avoid uh, being on the boat that you're gonna have to mulach on Shabbat. Now I saw one explanation here by the Rivet and the Ran. They say that the what is that for? 
um, that we sort of know that when you're on a boat or even when you're in a, a under siege or something like that, um, you're going to come to a dangerous place. Uh, you, it, it's going to be inevitable. Being on a boat is not, it wasn't, it was, none of these forms of travel were incredibly safe. Um, and what's going to happen is you're going to have to be, do something, you have to do Chal Shabbat for Pikuach Nefesh. Um, and <laughs> you can't even go for the, you can't even get on the boat. So i about to say, um, that's how the Rabbit and the Ram want to explain it, which is, um, uh, has a lot of ramifications for today about how careful we have to be to avoid uh, pikuach nefesh. So, meaning, so be machmir on pikuach nefesh. Have to be very careful uh, what we do and how we behave in the public sphere. Tanabon, and that's what Shalom was very careful about saying: uh, uh, keep those social distancing even at the brick. Tanabon, and Ema figim isvinah pachomish shlosha yamin kol shabbat. Remember, the varim amurim, the varim shoot. If you went on a and just say a pleasure cruise, but no, let's talk about uh, you went on a business trip. Uh, you can't get there on a on a boat. Ava lidvar mitzvah. If you're on shlichut to go uh, collect money for the uh, for the yeshiva or something like that, I don't know. Or you have to get to Israel for Ali Ali Regel. I don't I don't even know. That's the that's mitzvah. Ava lidvar mitzvah shapir dami. Maybe you're the maybe the Rafa Machshir on the boat. Ava lidvar mitzvah shapir dami. It's mutar. You can get on the boat even then on, on Wednesday. So the posekimo, and you establish for yourself in that case. Um, now establish imo. Now who is the imo with the, himself, the guy who's traveling, or with the captain of the ship, which is generally an angel? Um, so you tell the guy that you request of him, you demand of him. I can't even say it. What are you going to say? Um, that. You, you, it's not like you have to force the ship to rest on Shabbat, to stop sailing on Shabbat. Ella, um, it's, you do it for, quote, Shemaim. Uh, you, you sort of say, uh, but, and I, you know, I don't travel on Shabbat. Um, if you can do anything you can, if you can stop the boat, uh, the guy is supposed to say, I heard you, thank you very much, I will take that into consideration while we're in the middle of shark infested waters. Um, you don't even have to do that. You don't have to, to speak to the captain. Uh, however, the, and he says, the, if you're tra- traveling on the ship that goes from Tzor Mitzor Litzidan, side into Tzor, uh, not that far. That's in Lebanon, a few kilometers over there. Um, it's, it's reasonably short. Uh, from there to there, I feel very Shabbat Mutar. So a short enough trip, you're allowed to you're allowed to drive. You're allowed to drive on the water. You're allowed to take a take a boat. Um, so uh, according to Rashi, it, it, if I were to walk that distance, it would take me only uh, it, it's it's a one day's walk. Um, and Rashi tells us, I, and on Erev Shabbat, I Hashem Yom Ashuk, and that's why people would go from sort of Sidan, so you can you know do the it's market day. So you can bring back stuff. You buy your stuff for Shabbos. You bring it back home. Tan Rabbanon. Ain't tzarich al ain't tzarich. Ain't tzarin al ayerot shel goyim pachom shushayim yikod on the Shabbat. So there, here you go. This is a the halachic thing about about how we wage war. That you don't um, uh, you don't lay siege to a city of, of non Jews uh, less than three days before Shabbat. I can just imagine us telling uh, Arik Sharon, Arik, listen. Um, we we can't we can't we can't do this. It's Thursday. Like, imagine all the Hasdarim came coming and say, no, no, we can't do this. We're not allowed. It's still out of Shabbos. You know, we got to worry about Shabbos for the goyim that you know they're going to have to do do chilul Shabbat and all that stuff. No, we can't do it. Um, now we're going to get to a point here that I'll, I'll bring up an army thing in a second. Um, and if you did start there, Emaf Sikim, you don't stop. Uh, you don't stop the war on Shabbat, and that's an important important point. Um, a lot of people say, yeah, you know, there's sort of a mistaken notion that uh, what what's mutar to do on Shabbat uh, in the army, what's asur to do on Shabbat in the army. Um, basically, uh, people say, Dub, what's bikoch nefesh? And that's not the measurement. The measurement is what we call miftzai. Uh, is that so? If let's say you you take you do a um, a patrol in the jeep around the fence uh, all every day for a, cu- a couple of hours, and you're just driving the jeep around the day. And if you stop, what? 
Good. And, and you and on Shabbat, you don't do that. So then the enemy will learn that, oh, Shabbat, they're less vi- vigilant, and you can attack. So what we call it's Mivtsa eight. So you, you do the exact same, whatever is needed for um, your, uh, for whatever needed to, to keep the, the same level of readiness, combat readiness ready, you do that. Um, so wh- whatever that takes, that, that's what's what you can't do every, anything extra. Like you, you shouldn't do anything extra. You should try not to do anything extra. Um, but that's, that's sort of the, the bellwether here. So Amaf Sikin, this is what the same thing here is that you don't stop your, uh, you don't stop waging war on Shabbat. Um, now we saw in, it's in Sefer Dvarim, the Pasuk, when you, when you, uh, establish the siege on the city. Asher hi osayim cham yilchama, and you're fighting this whoever the whoever the the enemy is ad ridta until you want to take the city down. So what does this ad ridta mean? That you do it until all the way until you, you go all the way to the end. Ad ridta is that you have to continue the matzor. You can you have to continue the siege afilu the shabbat. Ad ridta is that's that's the chiyuv there that the 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 Torah tells us to wage war. You have to wage war until the end. E and that is the shabbat. You actually end up saving more lives like that. Amar Rabban Shimon ben Gamliel. Now we had said in the Mishnah that he gave a report on what his family's minhag was. No, again, you said what did they? Where would they know? Like that they would give their white laundry to the Koves at least three days before Shabbat. They would prepare a time of the bride. says Amar Rabbi Tzadok. Kachayim in Negoshe Beit Rabban Gamliel. This is the the minhag of the, of the house. They would give their whites, uh, their white laundry to the uh, to the kovets, to the washermen. Three days before Shabbat. So it was it was harder to wash the whites than it was the uh, the colored laundry. So that's what you consider because obviously they would take more time and take more work to get the whites clean. I, and I, I think the the obvious reason is that you could see the stains on the whites better. Uh, I mean, that would just be not to just stop getting it white. They would, I don't think they would stop send things to get washed. I think that they did it when things were dirty or something like that. So, and on this thing, Abayi, we tell a story about Abayi. Abayi have a yayv le'ahu mana ditzviya le'katsra. He would give his, um, or when he would be given, right? When he would give his um, his colored uh, clothing or co- colored cloak or garment, whatever it is, to the washerman, Amar Le, he would say, Kama ba'it ilave. Uh, how much do you want? How much do you want to wash it? The Koves would say, Kama Le, Kede I want the same prices. I have the same price for everything, for whites and darks. Um, Amar Le, uh, Bai says, <laughs> I wasn't born yesterday. Um, I already learned this from the Brighta. I knew about the Brighta, which is actually harder to wash. So you can't, you can't fool me. It's not the same price. You're gonna have to charge me less. I'm Rabbi. He said on this, "Hi man, the Yav man of the Katra, the Mishcha native day, the Mishcha Nishkomene." That whoever gives his clothes to or his garment to the washerman. Um, you make sure you measure it, I guess, before you give it, and make sure you measure it when you take it back. Why? The eat fay, if it were too long, afside Um I guess the uh, the the uh, the coves is going to stretch it out, or or he he gets he gets it he gets more. It was like make sure you're you're very careful if I get the but here if it was too short, afside the kvatze he's going to make it. Uh, He's going to make it shorter, right? Something like that. Um, I, I guess that he, they knew about uh, that things shrink in hot water. Uh, cotton shrinks in hot water and garments shrink in hot water. So that's that's how Rashi says it. Um, so, and, and Rashi tells us that you should measure this beforehand because otherwise you're, you're running the risk that he's going to either shrink it or make it longer. So you got to be very careful with the kofsim and tell them what exactly what's going to happen. Make sure you set up with them that they're not going to, to take you. Shavin um, Elevay, we learned in the Mishnah that both Beishan and Beitilel hold Shetuanim, that you're the Korot Beitabad, right? The, uh, you can weigh down 
the Korot Beit Abad. Now it shows you the big picture. Now it's just a little picture of it. Uh, there it is. That's the Korah Beit Abad. There it is. That 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 Korah. Um, and there's the weight pulling down on the Korah itself, which are squeezing the the date the olives that are in there, and the olives will flow off into this little um, into that little receptacle. The olive oil will flow in there. So Arab Shabbat, I can I can set up this whole thing here. I set up that whole thing there on Arab Shabbat. Um, so Mishna Kulu, what about all the things in the Mishnah? The Gazu will be Shammai. Mishna Kulu be Tabad. We go even to the Gazu. So why why does it be Shammai hold? This is different than the other cases in the Mishnah. So Hanach the E Avid Lehu be Shabbat. These things, and if you did the Mishnah, me Chayiv Chatat, you know, Chayiv a Korban Chatat. Why? So, no. It things that you're going to come to be go that 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 you can eventually end up doing um, something that is going to require you a uh, korban chatat, um, you know, I guess stuff like visual mm -hmm. and and stuff like that, uh, just to remind us, yes, yeah, shorin and you can you can write, you put food in the in the oven, you know, you there might be an error, there might be a mamash chilul shabbat thing involved, you might start a fire, that's also lo mm chatat -hmm. logas, man tana to call me day, so yes, so who's the tana? Man tana to call me the ati the ati mimela. Mimela is from itself, by not something that you do not do actually physically in your hand. Shop your dummy. So who is the tana that holds that anything you do that 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 does it on its own? You're allowed to that. You're not doing anything. So here with our beta bad, I'm not doing anything. The weight of the beta bad is is being uh, the weight on bit on the korah. That's what's doing the work. I'm not doing the work. So anything else is doing the work. I'm not actually mamish pushing down. On the uh, on the to squeeze out the oil, I'm letting the the, the stick do the work, the, the stick, the the beam. I'm Rabbi Yosi, Rabbi Chanina. That's the sheet of Rabbi Shmuel. It's not. Learn the Mishnah. Hashum, uh, garlic. We have boser, boser, which is uh, early grapes. Uh, the the beginning of the grape when the grapes just start being start looking like grapes. We have milot. Milot are um, also unripe. Wheat, same the same kind of thing. Rashi says it. Shibolin shelo bashlo kotzochan. So shiriskam mi yom. If you if you ground these things, right? Ground. That's how Rashi tells us. But you ground these things while it's still dead. Rishonomer yikmor mishitach shach. You can take care of them. You can finish doing this job um, uh, after Shabbat. Now after Shabbat starts, it, it sounds like. Um, what you do is you, you you would grind these things. You grind these things and to get them in, uh, for whatever you're grinding them for, I guess, you know, on a veem, you wanted to get the juice out. Shum, you wanted to get the liquid out. You wanted to dry the shum out. So you would grind them up. You would, you would cut them up to as much as you can. And then you would put a weight on it. Um, yeah, and you would put a weight on it and that would squeeze out all the juice. Um, so that's that's how Rashi describes it. Just look at the last Rashi on the page. It says Yigmor. That's a Yigmor Mishetach Shach. He says straight up. Mechash Riskan v'tzavaram b'koved yanichem b'kelim ve'yitzu me'atzman u'mutar echatchila. That's mutar. So the, the 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 liquid comes out by itself. Um, so you you put these weights on before Shabbos, right? Is that the case? And then it drips out on Shabbos. It's a good, good question. I did not think of that. And that sounds like that sounds analogous to what we do in Beit Tabad. That you put yeah, yeah, that's that's probably what it is. Because I, I guess on Shabbat it might be. Since I don't want the liquid, I, 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 putting it on Shabbat sounds like a. Yeah, I think I think so. You're gonna do it before Shabbat. Yeah, you do it before Shabbat. Hold on. Yeah, the 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 halach is that shum boser shiriskami bod yom hamashkim hanim shachim v'yotzi mehem b'shabbat mutarim. Those liquids are not You can you, that's, there's not mukta there. Okay, he said that that's so the halach is like Rabbi Shmuel. Rabbi Kiva Omer, lo more. You're not allowed to finish the job there. You can't. Right. 
he says you can't asur the nicham mi beod yom tachat kovdan the digmor shetachshach. Right, you put it on every Shabbat, Albi. Um, you, you can't put it on before before then. Why? The Rabbi Lazar Omer. Now this Rabbi Lazar here. This is a little tricky. Um, we have two Rabbi Lazar, Rabbi Rabbi Lazars. One, the first one is Rabbi Lazar ben Pedat. He's in Amora. That's Rashi telling us. The second one is Rabbi Lazar ben Shamua. Rabbi Lazar ben Shamua. He was a generation right before. He was the generation before the Mishnah was established. So he was Rebbe's teacher. It's one of Rebbe's teachers, Rabbi Lazar ben Shamua. So here, this Rabbi Lazar is the is the is the um, is the Amora saying, Rabbi Lazar Amar, Rabbi Lazar he. Uh, the, he says the Amora Rabbi Lazar says the Shita we said before is Rabbi Shmuel. The Shita is Rabbi Shmuel. He wants to say the Shita Rabbi Rabbi Lazar. It's not Chalot Dvash. Chalot Dvash. Um, honey cakes is that what they're called? Honey cakes, right? Shiriskan Ber of Shabbat. The Rashi tells us these honey cakes are it's honeycomb. Uh, what honeycombs? Honeycomb. Thank you. All right. So he says Asuyin Kimin Chalot Shel Shava. They're like these waxy things. Uh, and that's where the honey comes. That's where the 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 dvash is is in them. Uh, that's where you get the the, the honey out of. You crushed it up and you let it drip out. You let the 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 honey ooze out. Asur, you're not allowed to eat that. You're not allowed to eat. What are you not allowed to eat? Um, like anything that was made on Shabbat. That's what it says. Hold on. Uh, so he says, "Asul leochla." Now, however, for Rabbi Lazar Matir, Rabbi Lazar, that that is Rabbi Lazar ben Shamua who says it's mutter. So he says, "Rabbi Yosi bar Chanina, my time alone, my Rabbi Lazar." So the, why is the first shita not like Rabbi Lazar? So Rabbi Lazar, um, uh, when we said, "Who was the one who told me that uh, the shita in our in our Mishnah is like Rabbi Shmuel?" That was Rabbi Yosi bar Chanina. So why did Rabbi Yossi Bar Hanina not quote the Shita Rabbi Lazar? Because it sounds like our, the case in, in, in Rabbi Lazar that we quoted just now sounds close to our Mishnah. Eh. Okay, uh, maybe. Um, like they're both cases of Riskan, and, the, and uh, basically what it says is that the things came out on their own. So he says, I'm a Rab, so what is Rabbi Yossi Bar Hanina going to answer to you? Amar Lecha Hatam, by the case of Chalot Vash, by the honeycomb, who to me ikara ochel ulvasof ochel? That from the beginning he's going to eat it, at the end he's going to eat it. The, you know why? Because dvash is always a food. So the chalot dvash, there was no real schita here. Um, I wasn't taking the food out of the food. It was dvash. It was always food, uh, if you will. I, I, I was, was doing no, no sort of schita, no sort of border here. I was just eating the, I was eating the honey anyway. Just made the, the honey easier to get out, if you will. I was going to eat my steak anyway, but I cut it up into pieces because it was easier to eat like that. Um, in, the, in the Mishnah, everything we're talking about, it would start off as food. In the end, we want the mashke, and that is going to be some sort of, uh, that's that's uh, Israel Shabbos of Schita. That's how Rashi says, when he says hacha. Um, yeah, he says hacha. Zetim uh, vanavin de matrith and de mikara ochla is beginning they were ochel vahash the mashka ika the megzer shemi yischot mishetechshach the vaday schitahu that's only schitah like when I'm squeezing the oil out of the out of the olives that is definitely schitah so that's why we do it erev Shabbat that's why um, uh, Rabbi Yosi Rabbi Chanina stands chose essentially chose the other one. Hello, are we talking about here that the uh, that we if the beginning, when we put the Korah on the Zaytim, we're talking about using the olive oil on Shabbat, or are we talking about that we can't do it at all? Uh, so, um, we understood it, we understood the Mishnah, to say that you can't uh, do it, at, that the reason why you can't do it, hold on, I want to make sure that I'm going to say it right. The halacha you quoted before, Stu, said that you could use the liquid on Shabbos. I know, but that was by the, the shum. 
I just want to make well, sure. But that's the analogous case. He's saying that's the same case. That's what Yuhanina is saying. Uh, I know. Hold on. Sorry, one second. Sorry, sorry. I thought the whole time when I learned that Mishnah that it was all about you did it before Shabbat and the stuff that came out yeah, you could use them on a I guess you can use that liquid on Shabbat. Go back to the Mishnah, folks. Tafyut Chet Amud Aleph. Turn back. The Rashi. It's the second, the second line from the top that I that, I'm, that I care about here. All right, Yud Chet Amud Aleph, second line from the top. Shetuani. What is, so it's describing to us what the action was. So let's see, Yechiel, if we're answering it. So what, what would they do? They would um, put the Zetim in these, in these uh, baskets and then put the beam of the Beit Abad on top of that and they would squeeze it out. So Rashi Shita of squeezing these things out was uh, I, I showed you one of the pictures yesterday is that there are a, a few different shitot. One is you imagine a screw and you, you tighten the screw onto uh, 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 to squeeze it out and you just keep tightening the screw. Here was they're saying it's just a weighted system. There was a pulley system that was just pulling down on the beta butt. That's we showed these, these heavy beams. The honey the god kri igulin. So the 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 shita by wine is similar, but it was called something else. It was these big these big round stones or something like that. She dafin avin asin ki igulin. There were these round plates that were put down that were placed on top of everything. Vishavin shetonino. It's the same thing. Shetonino ta mibodiom. They would uh, put these things on, put the beta bar or put the igulin on top of the grapes or the, or the olives while it was still daylight. The hamashke and the, the, the liquid coming out, holech vizav kol shabbat. And it would, it would, it would ooze out all shabbat. Uvigmara, our gemara is what we're talking about here. Uvigmara. Parich, they asked the question in our gemara. Mai shna dilo pligebet shemai beha. So why, again, we asked in our Gemara, why wasn't Beit Shammai holding, why did he think that this was such a, this is much of the others weren't? With Faresh, why? Even on this thing, there's no Isra on Shabbat. If you want to say, if you want to say that it is an Av Malacha, because we're going to learn later on in Masech, in another 130 pages, that's the difference. That they didn't crush them up while it was still daytime. And that would be usr. The he tolda de dash, and that is a a tolda of the avnalacha of dash of 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 separating the chaff from the wheat. I think I got that right actually. Winnowing dash is winnowing. Uh, so Rashi says very clearly that you broke this apart. That's what I explained. First, you broke them apart, and you took the the, the mush into the baskets. First, you walk all over them like they do in Italy. Not anymore, I'm sure. Even without the beam, it would still be a mashke. It would still come out. And that mashka sounds like it's mutter. So the reason why we put it on it, because it's just a better way of getting it out. 
but the stuff it it, it oozes out. So Yechiel, it sounds like yes, you can use it on Shabbat. So I turn back to our Gemara. So that I think that may have answered your question there. So our Gemara says, Hacha mi karo chev hashtamashke. Rabbi Lazar Amar v'cha hashamina le Rabbi Lazar that fidu zetim v'anavim nami shari. He says even by zetim v'anavim in our case of olives and grapes. It's also mutter. The haki at Rav Oshai bin Arda. So there is a case when is the haki at Rav Oshai bin Arda when he came from there. The ata ve'aiti matziti He brought this brayta in his pocket. And what did what did the brayta say? Zetim v'anavim shiriskan merav Shabbat. So you you crushed up these olives and grapes like we just read in the Rashi over there. You crushed them up. So you sort of prepared them for the real squeezing. Uh, and the and the liquid was flowing just uh, by itself. Asurin, you can't do that. Matirin, they say it is mutter. So now we ask the question here. This sounds like the case. Why again? Why did Rabbi Yisrael Rabbi Hanina not use uh, the uh, the case of Rabbi Lazar? Rabbi Lazar, we say Rabbi Lazar Bar Hanina. The bright lo shmiel lay. I guess he just didn't know it. He didn't know that straight up bright. He only knew the the, uh, the first case, um, and that's why he didn't say it. Which is an interesting answer. Um, so now, what's the obvious question that we have to ask? The obvious question is: so Why didn't Rabbi Lazar the Amora go the other direction? Why didn't he say Rabbi Shmuel said? So we say so. Uh, Rabbi Lazar my time alone, Mark Rabbi Yosibar Chanina, that our Mishnah is like the Shita Rabbi Shmuel. So Amar Lecha, so Rabbi Lazar says back to you, Lav itmar alad, Amar Rabba Bar Chani, Amar Yochan. Did we not already say about this statement uh, in the name of Rabba, who said the name of Rabbi Yochan? Bimichus, we were talking about a case of Bimichusarin Dicha. Now, our, we were talking about our um, our case of Shum and Boser and, and the grapes that are not yet. Um, what's it called? A mortar and pestle. Uh, Doha is, uh, is it, 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 we're talking about uh, the grinding thing of the mortar and pestle. So these, had, the Shum and the Boser had not been ground up or broken up at all. Mm -hmm. um, everyone's going to agree that you can't put them in a plea that's going to squeeze the Nozlim out on Shabbat. You can't do that. That's the Mechusr Dicha. Keep Ligi, where is by Rabbi Shmuel and Rabbi Akiva. It's a case of Mechusarin Shrika. Uh, shrika means um, uh, uh, friction on it um, rather than grinding it. Uh, that, that, that's, that's, the, uh, that's the difference. Um, so he says, the Pligi Mechusarin Shrika, Vahaninami, in our Mishnah, our Mishnah too is Kimechusarin Dicha Damu. They want to say it's like as if they hadn't been ground up yet. And in that case, it, it, it's cases, so that's why it's machlok in here, that's why it wasn't used here. Hora Rabbi Yossi, Rabbi Chanin, and Rabbi Shmuel, nevertheless, he, he said the halacha is like Rabbi Shmuel, and he says, you can ligmor the, the, the stuff that we did by the shum and the boser, you can finish that job even on Shabbat, even when it gets dark. So now we say, Shem and Shil Badadin, Badadin are the people, who own and run the Beit Bad, so Badadin from Beit Bad, right? Shem and Shabbat, we're going to meet, we meet up with Beit Bad all over Shas, but we're going to meet it again in the third parak of Baba Batra. We talk about where the Beit Bad comes in, about what is sold uh, when you sell, when I say I'm selling my Beit Bad, what is included in that sale and what is extra to the sale, what is the extent to the sale you have to pay extra for. So Shem and Shabbat, Badadin, so I showed you those baskets that you put the olives in when they're being squeezed. Those are the same thing. Rav, Rav Asar, Ushmuel Shari. What are they talking about? Rav Asar, what? Rav Asar, Rashi tells us the two two mishum mukze. So we're introduced in another uh, another um, uh, concept here of mukze that Rav Savar. I'm reading the Rashi here. Rav Asar, because it's an important Rashi and it matters here. The Rabbasar is a couple lines over where the Mishnah starts um, in the wide lines, probably about 10, 12 lines from the bottom of the thin lines. He says, Rab Asar, you can't move these baskets, you can't move these um, 
You can't move the shaman, and this is an answer to Yechiel here on Shabbat and the Machzalot. The Tiptuli Mishum Mukse. The Rav Savar Kerab Yehuda be Mukse, or Shmuel Savar Kerab Yishimon. The date lay Mukse, but Hachem read a Mishayichshir. So this is also well after it's dark. Shmuel's sheet, Rav Rav Rav. Unfortunately, Rav Shimon sheet that there's no such thing as Mukse. Rav says the Rav Yehuda says Rav Yehuda says there is Mukse. So Rav holds like Rav Yehuda that it's. You can't move these things. It's full of shari, but there's no muksa. Um, there's only very few things where muksa is even shaya. So this machlok, is on something else. On other cases, hani same machlok and hani krake dezuze. Um, these mats krake uh, dezuze krake are machtalot are mats. Um, it seems that these were cargo. These were the things covering the cargo hold in on a ship. Uh, that's what they would use to cover them, I, like, or we would call them big tarps uh, that they would tie down. The big canvas that they would tie down over things you see on trucks all the time. That's what the these are crocky to Zuzek. Uh, is the same thing for Mutzo because it was used for that. Shmuel Shari says Mutzo, and additionally, we got more. Amarav Nachman is uh, it's it should be in Eiza. Um, uh, you guys, uh, I know you guys are all scientists, but it, it's it, the milk comes from the female of the species. Is um, la chalava? Uh, if you're raising this, is just for milking for the milk. Virachel and a female, uh, what we would call an um, an u, right? An u is the girl. Yui. Yui. It's an u. It's an u. Yui. Stop! No way. I'm looking that up. It's definitely an ooh. Come on, you, you, you want to say something? E W E. Yes. You. That's a you. You see the you. You. Fred. Yes. Why it's a you? Ooh? Yes. Thank you, Albie. You. Stick to science. <laughs> Um, w -E. oh, we're gonna look it up now. You know, we're both gonna go straight to the dictionary on this one. Um, I have a dictionary. It's what we call it's Google on Shabbat. Shmuel Shari Amar Rav Nachman Ez Lachalva VeRachel LeGizata that you're raising it for its wool VeTanegolet LeBitzata, which you raise for the eggs VeTore Deridia and oxen that you that are used for plowing. Um, by the way. That oxen use for plowing, we um, uh, we refer to this. There are two sometimes used Torah le Bisra or Torah le Ridia. Uh, what is the ox used for? Is it for its meat or is it for its um, plowing? You'd rather the ox raise for meat because the meat will be softer. Oxen used for plowing, the meat is tough because there's less fat. Um, and it comes up in Bavakama about where things are sold and stuff interesting and damages that'll come up again. Vitamre de Iska and dates that are used for Mishar, right? Iska for Asik, for business. All of these things, Ravasar, you can't I guess you can't eat any of these things. Um, you can't do shita and Yom Tov on these things because these things are moksa because you really did not have intent to use these things for the intent that you wanted to use them for, right? Uh, the the, the eggs is used for its chalab, not for its meat. Um, they, were, they were prepared for something else. Shmuel Amar Mutar, there's no din milksa. And we, now we're going to, this is sort of like a, a slight tangent here. Kami Pao giving Pluka, they're just giving us the background, I guess, of it. Uh, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Shimon. Um, and so that is just, that, that comment was added later. It's just to tell us that Rav and Shmuel's argument is they hold, they are hulking in the same argument, Rabbi Yehuda, Rabbi Shimon. How tell me the de'ore becharta. This is great. This, there was this Talmud um, who gave, uh, who, who he was on his, uh, um, YU had sent him out for a placement as an assistant rabbi in some, some godforsaken place, they needed a rabbi. They said, yeah, you take this kid. Becharta de Argis Kirabi Shimon. He said that this, in this place, Becharta de Argis Kirabi Shimon, he passed in the Kirabi Shimon. Shanti Rav Amnuna. And Rav Amnuna put him in, uh, put him in, um, 
put him in Kherim, which is sort of like similar. It's a, it gave back to Rav Shechter that this Talmud was pas, Paskin, like like what he was telling me. Like, what the hell do we teach this kid? So, Shavtei uh, Dravon Luna. The Hag Kerav Shimon Sviralan. So they don't understand. Why? I don't get why are you putting him in why are you putting him in Kherim? He was he Paskin like Rav Shimon. Um, so, Hag Kerav Shimon Sviralan. So the answer, this is a great answer. Actually, the Rav Hava. So he was in one of these small villages, but he was in underneath the uh, the he was in a branch office of Rav of Rav. He was in Rav's Rav's area, uh, and Rav did not like him. And Rav is not uh, did not pass like that. Even though we theoretically can pass like that, there, since the place was uh, Rav is a so you have to you have to be pass like Rav. And that would be Mzavzel cover. Uh, so, and then we have another story like that. Hani Trey Tamidei Chad Matzil Bechad Mana. One saved, I guess, from a fire. Is what really what we're referring to. Chad Matzil. Um, uh, he took out Chad uh, Matzil. He took out food from the fire to, and he put it into the chaser. Um, one learned in Mishnah. How much do you save? You save um, a, a basket full of bread. Uh, even though there is a hundred, what well, he took one clay and he put like he load load loaded that clay up with as much as possible. So I didn't save stay sudot. He just took everything that went into the clay. Um, uh, the question is, do you uh, should you take out uh, everything in one clay? Is because that is that one act of otsa or four or five kli? Is that more than one act of what size, you know, whatever. They, are you allowed to do that? Since you talk shahotra, hotra. So, coming back, you look at the Rav Bar Zav, the Rav Huna. So, similarly, they, they have a ma, this machlokan and something else. We're going to get there. We're going to we're going to talk about it later on in in, in Masecha Shabbat. And let's do the Mishnah. We'll end with the Mishnah today. So, um, so now we're going to talk about things that about Arab Shabbat and finishing on Shabbat. I think is this the last Mishnah of the parak? I think it is. So ain't so we we refer to this on Daf Yudchet. Ain't so in basar batsa basa ain't so in basar. You can't roast meat, batsal, onion, beitzah, egg. Ela kadeshi it's so in You have to be you have to be cooked. You have to be uh, roasted uh, most of the other day. Ain't not nim pat la tanur im chashicha. You don't put um, the bread into the oven too close to Shabbat. Vlo charara al gabei gechavim, and you can't put. Uh, uh, Pot is a um, sort of a, a loaf-like uh, substance, right? You take the, the dough that in a loaf. This is up Fred's alley here. Um, and that you can't put in. And harara would be a sort of a pita-like bread. It's, a, it's flatter. On, on, on uh, coal. He's got a picture on the next page, too. Oh, excellent. So that's the pot, the tenor. Yeah, I see that. Thank you, Abby. Uh, we'll t- so we can show that tomorrow. Good. Um, and uh, Tzvi, this is what we referred to yesterday. How the uh, the face of the of the of the loaf changes color, or 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 it changes, it becomes crust like. Um, so that the, the crust has to start mibodiom. Rabbi Liezer Omer, kadeshi krom tachton shela, and the the bottom of it. That's uh, the bottom of it. That, that would be a, a shorter time, right? It, it, it cooks on the bottom first, the, the part that's connected to the wall, I guess, or, or on the coals. Um, and then the last one is Mishal Shalin et HaPesach Batanur Im Chashicha. You can put the Korban Pesach in the uh, Tanur. Not, this is obviously not on Pesach itself. It has to be on Shabbat, Erev Pesach on Shabbat, because obviously on Pesach it's much of the So it has to be Erev Shabbat Im Chashicha. Uh, so we're going to finish the cooking on Shabbat. Uh, of, uh, we're going to talk about all this in the Gemara. Ma'achizin et ha'ur. Um, you light the fire. Ma'achizin is you get the fire to, to take hold. So ma'achizin, you light the fire. Hold on a second. Ooh, Gabi, that hurt. Gabi says it should be pronounced you. Right, that's that's Gabi's. Uh, Gabi looked it up and and sent it back to us. The official thing, Albi, we were wrong. Uh, 
But I'm, you know, I'm still gonna go look it up. Can I see that they're both both pronunciations are correct? I'm gonna do that on purpose. Isn't that what I said? You said a U. Yeah, I said U. Like why are you? Uh, okay, sorry, sorry, Fred. You were right. Albert, you were wrong. Still, Fred was right. Ma'achizin, ma'achizin et ha'or ben durat beit hamoked. So you would like to fire the beit hamoked. Remember beit hamoked? That was that place, the big place. The Kohat Rashi gives this whole explanation here. Shalom Khan, you're gonna like this. Um, the Kohanim could only walk around in certain, uh, um, they could only wear certain clothes. They wore, they were barefoot. The, the Beit HaMikdash was open. The clothes they were wearing were really light. Uh, it's not like they were wearing winter coats. They weren't allowed to wear anything else, remember. That's kind, of, kind, of, only, kind, of like, kind of like scrubs as we wear in the OR. Exactly. You could only wear that. Exactly. Very good. <laughs> you can only wear the scrubs in the OR. Um, I'm used to it. And it's cold, right? It's cold there. <laughs> and it's cold there, too. Right, exactly. So oh, thank God you're working so you can work up, so you can stay warm. Um, uh, so the, uh, you, you can only walk around like that. So they went into this Beit HaMokad, which was heated. They had this fire going in the Beit HaMokad. We know that. So Machizin et ha'or bimdurat Beit HaMokad on Erev Shabbat, even close to Knisat Shabbat. And you light it even then so that... Uh, uh, everything would take fire and stay. You'd stay warm. However, big vulim You need most of the wood to have been lit in the fire. You can't just have the fire just beginning in in the vulim. I mean, outside the mikdash. But you don't matter. Be pechamin in a, a coals. Even in even in vulim, you can light it because you know what's going to happen. I feel a kol shahu because um, once the pechamin get lit. They're, uh, they, they don't go out. They're gonna, we're not going to worry that you're going to keep them, you're going to light them again. Um, we're going to stop there. I'm going to talk about Machal Ben Jusai tomorrow, about how much food needs to be cooked. And I think that, does that finish the parrot? Yeah, we're going to finish the parrot tomorrow. That's exciting. Uh, well, gentlemen, have a good... Uh, you did a wonderful job. You. <laughs> Very good. Thank you. 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 All right, and now I'm definitely ending this meeting.